So this is the first of a few videos uh, that is intended to just show you some of the basics of Power Teacher Pro, which is the new grade book that Power School is switching over to. So I'm going to show you some basics in this particular video, and then on the next one we'll delve into some more specifics of um, assignments and things like that. So what's nice about the new gradebook, the best thing about it is that it's all internet based. So no more little gradebook icon on your desktop that's depending on Java that only works half the time. You can now log into PowerSchool from any browser on any device. So I can be on Firefox on my home PC or I can be on Chrome on my Mac or I can even be on Safari on an iPad. It doesn't matter, it works on every device on every browser. So once you log into PowerSchool, there is now going to be a link Power Teacher Pro in your navigation toolbar, and that's how you get to your gradebook now. So if you log in in the next week or so and you don't see this here, it's because it has not, the update hasn't finished yet. Uh, Michael, Marcelia, and I will let you guys know when this is officially available. It'll probably be at the middle of next week. So um, once you click on Power Teacher Pro, it brings you into your gradebook. I know it looks very different. But trust me, it's very intuitive. It's very easy. It's always going to land you um, on this grading tab right here. Um, but go ahead and, and take the opportunity when you get to log in to scroll through some of these um, tabs. They're very self-explanatory. I'll just go ahead and show you the students one really fast. So when you do student view, um, you can do it by assignment. Um, that's going to be something you look at, especially if you have a meeting with guidance or special ed. Um, there's a demographics tab just like there used to be, and here's where you would access things like their um, mom and dad's email addresses and phone numbers, their locker combination, thing like, things like that. Um, this is also where you can access under Quick Lookup uh, their grades in their other classes. So it's all right here. It's very easy to get through. You know, take the time to sort of click around in here. And then if you're looking for something in particular, ask Barbara DeLarmo or myself, and, and we can certainly help you find it. So um, coming back to the grading tab, I'm going to click the grading tab. And before we actually get into assignments, I'm going to show you that there are um, two different views. Now, the first view we came up on when we first logged in was the assignment list view. This is probably not really what you're used to. Um, you're probably going to feel like it's more comfortable. I'm going to click on this again to use the score sheet view, only because this is sort of you know what you're accustomed to is this where the assignments are sort of columns and then you have your students as, as rows. Um, another big demand uh, when PowerSchool was switching over to PowerTeacher Pro was um, the ability to adjust the screen. Um, some of you guys would complain, the gradebook screen is so small and I can't adjust it. Well now because this is an internet browser, you can do whatever you want with it. So I'm just hitting Command Plus on my keyboard, Command Plus again, and I can zoom in. Or if you want to see more and you like seeing more, I'm hitting Command Minus now, and, and I can adjust the size of, of what I see, which is which is a really nice feature, and, and we didn't have that in the old gradebook. So before we get into talking about some of the assignment stuff, I'm going to go back to grading, and now I'm going to go to categories, because I do want to say something about this before we move forward. Now, obviously, these are just, this is a test server right now, so these are all fake categories, but what's going to happen is you guys are going to have preloaded categories in here, and they're going to be school-wide categories. So what Troy and I did is we worked with the supervisors, and we said, you know, what categories is everyone using? What do we all need? What, is, what do the science folks need? What do the math folks need? So what we did is we came up with a bunch of categories that work for everyone, like test and project, et cetera, and then a bunch of other ones that, you know, other people needed, some people needed them, some people didn't. So, but what we didn't want to do is have like three different categories of homework and all named slightly different. We want them all called homework. So we're going to have school-wide categories and the ones that you don't need, what you're going to do is come in here to the category page and you're going to inactivate them and you're going to just make them inactive and then you don't even have to worry about them. You don't even see them in your gradebook and then they're not a thing anymore. So let's say you know, this is my um, uh, skills class and we're not going to do tests in there. So if I come next to this CP test and I want to inactivate that category, there's a little pencil button next to that category. I'm going to click that. Um, it also lets you customize uh, the colors, which is kind of cool. But I'm going to click inactive. I don't need it anymore. And then it won't show up in my gradebook anymore. And then, of course, I'd hit the save button. 
Um, from this page, you can also choose to make this inactive in just certain classes. So let's say uh, this teacher needs it for homeroom and math, but not for history and science. You could actually uh, specify which classes you need those categories for. Also a really nice feature. Um, for, let's say, this test category, let's say I'm keeping it active, it's something I need, you can actually come in here to the assignment defaults, and you can set the assignment default to, let's say, always be 100 points, and that they're always going to count in the final grade. So this is where you would manipulate the defaults. Now, when you're actually creating a test, will you be able to manipulate these items? Yes, of course, but this is what's going to come up as the default, just to save you time. All right, so again, any changes that you make, you want to click Save. And I'm just going to X out of this box. I'm going to discard changes because I don't need to save those changes. You would, of course, save the changes. Now I'm going to come back here. Just I'm going to keep coming back to that score sheet view because it's where we're comfortable. And as you can see right now, we are in a fourth grade English class. Um, it says score sheet quarter four. So how do I get to my other stuff? Is what you're probably wondering. Up here, if we click this little arrow, this is where we can toggle not only between classes right here, so let's say I want to get to the science class now, but we can also toggle uh, terms. So I'm going to go back to this, and right here where it says 15, 16, I can now drop that menu down, and here's where I can uh, go between semesters, quarters, uh, school year, all of that good stuff. So if you feel like you're in the wrong spot, probably want to set this and, and that's what it's going to stay on until you change it again and now I'm going to go let's say to history all right so uh, the other thing in this drop down menu on this tab is groups uh, there aren't any groups set up in this particular test server but groups would be good for something um, like for example um, Kevin Wilson teaches multiple uh, CP biology classes he can actually group them together let's say three sections together. So that way when he goes to grade them, they actually all come up in one list and he can you know, fill in all the grades at once. So this will be really helpful um, for the musical theater teachers, for the phys ed teachers, um, people that have multiple sections and can be grouped together. I'm not gonna um, go through how to group now, but I will be happy to help those people who would like to group their classes for ease of use. So um, that's all I'm gonna cover in this video. Um, if you would like to go ahead and move on to the next video, which is going to cover how to add an assignment and how to fill in scores, then you can. Or you can just wait for the test server to come out, or excuse me, your live login to come out, and then you can play around with it on your own. Uh, please let me or Barbara DeLarmo know if you have any questions.